Welcome to the getting started video for Gravity Engine 3.0. What we're going to do here is go from the simplest kind of hello world Gravity Engine scene we can create to a spaceship in a scene that uh, changes its orbit based on user input. So we'll begin with an empty scene in Unity and all Gravity Engine scenes are going to require an instance of the Gravity Engine singleton component. So let's go ahead and create an empty game object called Gravity Engine, GE for short, and we will add the Gravity Engine component. You can see here there are a number of uh, breakout tabs in the inspector for this component. Uh, what we're going to work in are units that are dimensionless, so call them game physics units if you like. Uh, there are other choices. You can use orbital or solar units. And that changes how you enter masses, whether you use kilograms or uh, heavier units to move 23 kilograms. Particularly important is this checkbox here, which is automatically add in body, which allows the gravity engine to detect all objects that have a gravitational mass attached to them and evolve them uh, as the scene plays. So let's go ahead and create an object in our scene. So we'll just create an empty object and we'll call that object planet. Let's get the capitalization the way we want it. And we'll make that uh, a sphere. So we'll create the sphere model as a child of planet so that we can scale it independently and control its transform rotation independently. Uh, and we'll make the sphere maybe just a little bit bigger. And in order to make it a bit interesting, we'll go into our uh, resources here. And uh, actually, sorry, the wrong resources. Let's go into images and let's just grab, uh, for example, the Jupiter texture and drop it on our sphere. So now if we zoom in a little bit, we can see we've got a planet that looks a bit like Jupiter. And then in order for this planet to be controlled by Gravity Engine, it needs to have a mass. Uh, first, we'll just reset this position. And we will add a component called nBody. And this is very much the central component in Gravity Engine for objects that want to be moved under gravitational influence. So uh, there's a mass here. So since we're using kind of game physics units, we'll make that arbitrarily 100. There's the opportunity to set an initial velocity. Uh, for the time being, we'll leave that at zero. Uh, and then in order to add another object in our scene, we'll create another game object, put it up at the top. We'll call that spaceship. And here we will grab a prefab of a space station, just a very simple uh, model that we've created. Uh, station model here. We'll just grab that and drop it on the spaceship here. And we'll take the spaceship and put it at x equals 10. We'll pop into our planet here, zoom out a bit, find our spaceship. Which has an L, I set the rotation to 10. Let's fix that. So we don't want a rotation of 10, we want an x position of 10. And then we will go ahead, because we want this also to be under gravitational control, and add an n body component. So this uh, spaceship, in relation to the mass of a planet, has effectively got a mass of zero. So we'll just leave that mass at zero. That's fine. Gravity engine won't complain. So that's really all we need to do to have kind of the hello world of the gravity engine scene. We're just going to move our camera back a little bit further to get some perspective here. And actually, while we're at it, let's just turn off the skybox and make the background white just to make everything a little easier. So now when we press play in our scene, gravity engine detects the two end bodies, updates their position every frame. Because we don't have a collider, the spaceship just falls through, and then as it gets closer to the planet, gets a lot of acceleration and goes hurling out the other side. Which isn't exactly what would happen physically. We would have a collision. We would change things around. So if we wanted our spaceship to be in orbit, we can go to the spaceship 
and give it some initial velocity. So in this case, if we want it to be going around the planet, if we give it some velocity in the y direction, then it won't, as it moves towards the planet, hit the planet, it'll move away. So let's try a y, of, a y velocity of 3 in these dimensionless units and just take a look and see what happens with a bit of trial and error. So the spaceship goes off. It's going in an orbit of some path. But if we wanted to, for example, make an exactly circular orbit, it would be a bit of a challenge to get this velocity right. But before we tackle that problem, let's first of all uh, add an element that allows us to see the orbit that the spaceship is in. So what we can do is we can add a new empty game object here, which we'll call Orbit Predictor. And we'll add to it a component surprisingly enough, called Orbit Predictor. And so this has automatically added a line renderer because the Orbit Predictor requires that that be present. And then in this Orbit Predictor component at the bottom, there are two fields in the inspector that we need to fill in the center object. So what is the orbit around? Well, the orbit is around the planet. And the body, what is the thing that's doing the orbit? Well, that's the spaceship. And if we just go ahead and press play, we'll get the default line renderer behavior, but you'll get a sense of what's going to happen here. So our orbit's not far off from circular, actually, but you can see it's a little bit off circular. We also have uh, the default material here, which is uh, far from appealing. So let's go ahead and grab a material, uh, say this dull red, drop it on the orbit predictor. Let's make the orbit predictor a little narrower, and let's see what that looks like. So now we can see the path of the orbit. And what's happening here is the orbit prediction is being updated every frame. So if we change the velocity of the spaceship, as we'll do in a minute with uh, some key press controls, then we will see immediately the orbit change. Likewise, if another planet came close and started to perturb this orbit and change it, we would get the new prediction, assuming that the spaceship continued to orbit this planet, that, that assumption is built into the orbit predictor, uh, but the orbit would get updated every frame as that other body moved by. So you'd see the orbit get perturbed. Let's stop that, actually maybe let's make that a little bit narrower still. So let's go back to the question of how we control the initial orbit other than by just changing this velocity. So changing this velocity is very hit and miss for a couple of reasons. Uh, the value of the velocity you need to, for example, be in a circular orbit will change as you get further away from the planet, and it will change as the mass of the planet changes. So you can go to Wikipedia or crack open some physics books and find the appropriate formulas, or we can take advantage of a component uh, in Gravity Engine 3.0 that allows you to add an arbitrary orbit, which we'll call Orbit Universal. Prior to version 3.0 of Gravity Engine, you had to choose between an elliptical orbit and a, or a hyperbolic orbit. This orbit universal actually allows you to change smoothly from an ellipse to a parabola to a hyperbola, all with one component here. So similar to the orbit predictor, there's a center end body, so we need to say what the spaceship is in orbit around, so it's an orbit around the planet, and now you can see the default values here with a, a semi-parameter of 10 and an eccentricity of 0, and an eccentricity of 0 is the circular orbit we're looking for. Uh, we can see in the scene view exactly what path this orbit will have. And we have some choices. We can enter the eccentricity and the semi-parameter of the orbit and its orientation, or we can choose some uh, other ways of representing the orbit Essentially, it's just a different set of parameters for describing an orbit where you can choose the major axis and just change the eccentricity with a slider if you wish. In this case, it is constrained to be an ellipse. Or you can, if you prefer to set the closest and farthest approach, so apogee is the farthest distance, we could change that to 20. And you'd have to hit return to update these fields. So now you've controlled the orbit that way. If you want to go back to double and you want the orbit to be hyperbolic, you can make the eccentricity larger than one and you get a hyperbolic orbit. So we'll go back to our circle. 
and let's make it uh, say 15 units in radius. And now if we go ahead and press play, we get exactly the orbit that we want. So that's pretty good progress. The last step is to find a way to control this spaceship uh, and change its velocity and see the orbit update as we do that. So in order to do that, we'll add a component to the spaceship. Uh, I've created what I would regard as sort of the simplest possible uh, script to do that. So it's called getting started ship. So we'll add that component has a thrust, which we'll actually turn down a little bit to some maybe uh, 0.2. And let's just take a look at that in demos scripts here, getting started. The uh, text previewer doesn't like the Visual Studio formatting that much, but essentially what we have here is a getting started script that is attached to an end body. So when it starts, it gets the end body component of the game object it's attached to. And then in the update method, which is here, if the key is a W, then it applies an impulse. What does it apply an impulse to? The ship. And the size and direction of the impulse is thrust times vector three dot up. So that's in a specific direction. Uh, and in a real spaceship, you would probably add the whole WASD, maybe Q and E as well to do all three dimensions. Uh, and adjust it accordingly, but we're just trying to show the simplest possible case here. So with this script attached, when we run this scene and we press the W key, the orbit will be updated by calling into the gravity engine single using gravity engine dot instance. So let's make our scene a little more palatable. We can go to maximize on play here. And so what I will do is I will start the scene as I press the W key, you can see that what's happening is that the orbit is changing. That concludes the getting started, where we went from an empty scene to a spaceship under user input. I hope that helps you get going with Gravity Engine. There are a number of other tutorials you can take a look at at nbodyphysics.com. Uh, feel free to use the support email and buddyphysics at gmail.com if you have questions. Thanks for your attention.